When it comes to horses, we all, always have a thought or a thinking about how sacred this horse is and how the horse is, is a part of the family. Everything that is going to be taught here today and the rest of the week, I truly believe in it. Because in a lot of ways, you know, that, you know, saving a horse is always a top priority. And working with the, how the veterinarians are working with the horses, and trying to keep the horses healthy. I truly believe in that also. I'm Glenda Davis with Animal Rescue Incorporated. I'm the founder and president of our nonprofit on the Navajo Nation. Um, my clans are Tapaha, Nishli, Ashiha, Bashishchin, Kiaani, Dashiche, Torajini, Dashinale. And I come from Sawmill, Arizona, and that introduction is for all Native people, um, just to let you know um, how we're related by clan. This was just an amazing um, grant that we were able to receive, and it's really going to help our people. And since we advertise, it's only been one week, people have been trying to get into the clinics to get the castrations done. And so it, we're going to be busy and I'm very happy about that. And with Animal Rescue as a nonprofit um, on a tribal nation, we're trying to bring the services back to our people. I make it a, a driving thought and a driving process just to bring services here. And we sure appreciate any support we can get to help us do that. And Horse Plus is helping us do that. Animal Rescue was started back in 2014, and we are a nonprofit and we are incorporated on the Navajo Nation. So our services, we provide animal wellness for herds, horses, um, and pets. And so our initiative here is to do the horse services for the Navajo people and their equine. This grant that we have with Horse Plus, it really did help a lot of these people who are very low income, especially when the time of COVID-19 where people are losing their jobs or they don't have much, much um, expenses, they don't have enough money. Um, but, you know, we really do appreciate what Horse Plus is doing for Navajo Nation and for our people, you know, when we tell them, hey, this castration study is going to be free. You know, it's not just because it's free, but we're doing it because there's an organization out there called Horse Plus. They're doing, they're going to be covering the costs for your castration. Some of them are just like, there's such and such odd. They're like, oh yeah, we had to scramble around for money. You know, we're thinking that we'll have to pay for the castrations. I'm like, no. I think volunteering for the Navajo Nation is one of the richest parts of my life. And as I approach the end of my life, I treasure these moments more and more. Last night, we received the blessing and the songs of one of the Navajo medicine men, and that touched me deeply. Life is so short and fragile. Trying to make a path of beauty means a lot to me. And I prefer not to do that chasing goals that are not as clear cut as what I've chosen. We wanted to bring our our costs down. Last year it was whoa, it was <laughs> very expensive. So this year we kind of learned um, how to pull this together and make it more beneficial and have a teaching component with um, veterinary students. And so um, we're doing a five five day 
services for dentistry, castrations, and hoof trims. And we're going to um, five different communities and we're traveling a lot of miles. And the reason we're doing that is we need to reach the, the vast area of the Navajo Nation. You're looking at 26, 27,000 square miles. And so we don't want for one entity to have to travel all the way to on the other side of the reservation to get services, so we're coming to them. Today we're starting in Ganado, Arizona, and we are going to move to the Hopi Nation, to the Hopi Veterinary Clinic. From there, we will go to Kayenta and um, leave for Shiprock and then come back to Fort Defiance. So we're doing an entire loop on the, on the Navajo Nation and trying to get services um, centrally so that people don't have to travel too far. We work on a shoestring and it's always a struggle to come up with the funding, even with volunteers. I mean, the, the gift that Horse Plus gave of subsidizing the castrations was huge. It made this possible. And we'll, we're gonna see 185 horses on this trip. I started helping Dr. Fisher do trips to the Navajo Nation a couple years ago and we we're trying to figure out a way to um, help the indigenous population who has no veterinary care or little veterinary care and we found Glenda Davis and uh, she got us involved full-time. My name is Marie Shepard I'm from here, Ganado. I brought two horses out. It, it was just convenient that it was here. And also as far as um, paying for the fees, it helps to have a reduced cost. Cause I do know, you know, some of the work here is uh, pretty expensive. If you were to go out um, to a regular um, veterinarian place. So, but it's a good opportunity and I, I just jumped right on it um, when I saw the flyers come out and I'm really appreciative that uh, the group that came together to provide this service to us locally um, and then without you know with everything going up and you know just the economy the way it is it really helps every bit to get services done for your animals that are really needed um, but sometimes you know you're you're having to make choices, so it was really good that um, I was able to get these, these things done for my horse as well as my nephew's horse. And, you know, it's just gonna work out at the end. So the horses will feel better and be happy. <laughs> so the horses in our culture are very, very important creatures. They are the communication between the earth and the sky and they actually um, give good health and wealth and well-being into the home. And when you own a horse, it actually is your protector. It's your, it takes care of the family and takes care of the area. And so just the idea of having that communication and that bond with the horse is really a positive thing in our culture and uh, just how um, the horse is represented and, and how they're created, um, given to the Navajo people. It's just a positive thing all the way around and they're beautiful creatures. My name is Rebecca Baker and I'm here. I brought the horse in for dentistry, We're kind of like a remote area, a community, and it's good because uh, we don't have to travel so far to get any of the services done. So it benefits a lot of us people. And then the price of gas is high too now. 
nowadays everything's going high, sky high. You know, people can't afford it. You know, where you even have a shot for his horses, you know, they go bad. You know, it's bad for the Neville issue. I see a lot of horses around, and I see they're wild. You know, they're just roaming around out there with no shots, no teeth floated, and all that. You know, that's something that nobody wants. But here, this is what we need. We need this every year, and I like to have this done next year again, have a grant out for these people so they don't have to pay too much for it or they can just come in and do their thing and go home. And it's good, it's good for the reservation. It's good for Navajo tribe. We are doing by appointments only today because we have a small crew and we have five vet students, so we didn't want to be overwhelmed. I think we have 16 dentistries divided between Veronica, the trained and experienced graduate of the Academy of Equine Dentistries and me. So knowing her, she's probably gonna do more than I do. And she's good, she's skilled, and she's fast. I'll probably be doing the most of the training of the vet students because with this setup, I can close the gate and make sure that the students aren't struck by a foot. And also they have good vision into the roof of the mouth and the teeth, and they can see and feel more comfortably than crouching down like this and trying to do the same thing without a seat. It's dangerous though, I think, to sit in front of a horse if you don't have a barrier. I think that the involvement of Horse Plus really helped because um, we had 10 or 12 castrations lined up before the organization stepped up to help cover the cost of those. So that helped a lot. That was the fifth castration that we had and he's still sleeping it off. Number four is standing right now, so we're making good progress. The next one is coming up for his physical exam. It's been going really smooth so far. All of our recoveries have gone really well. Uh, it's nice that we don't have a bunch of wind. <laughs> that makes logistics a little easier. Um, everybody's working together really well as a team. And uh, I think we're all having a good time. It also educates uh, the Navajo Nation that there is a good way that you can castrate colts, that they, they, they don't have as many complications. They have, it's an easier surgery and, and they, do be, they do better. So I, I think it's, for, for me, it's a, it's a win, win, win. I enjoy helping the Navajo Nation, but I also enjoy empowering vet students to, to be better vets. And, and for me, it's just, it's, uh, it's pretty satisfying to, to just, I don't know what the right term is, I guess pay it forward. Not every stallion should reproduce. Um, not every mare should reproduce either, but stallions are so much easier to geld, um, castrate, than, than mares are um, uh, to spay. And so um, you only wanna keep the best of the best stallions, right? And stallions always have one priority and that priority isn't necessarily doing their job or human safety. And so geldings are a fantastic um, animal to be around. Um, and I say even about a nice stallion, they're going to make an even nicer gelding. Uh, <laughs> so they, they need to be a truly spectacular specimen to stay um, a stud. And so this is so important. What we did today was we were on the castration station. So um, we gelded 10 no, we gilded nine. We had one that we did not that have testicles yeah. that we could take out. So um, unfortunately he was unhandleable enough that we had to lay him down to figure that out. So we got a little nap, but um, yeah, we had no complications. We had excellent recoveries. Horse castration is a good, really good population control for Navajo. We do have an overgrazing of horses on Navajo, which is depleting a lot of our uh, grasslands, a lot of our um, 
good grass or good, you know, it's depleting all of our natural resources and stuff. Decreasing the population by castration of stallions and maintaining the quality of the horses that we do have is absolutely vital um, to safety, to horse health, to biosecurity, um, just, just to everything. Wild horses and um, horses to these tribes means so much and maintaining those healthy populations like well that's just america right that is that is what you think when you see these breathtaking vistas right as these wild gorgeous animals running across it and maintaining those with careful castration and selection um, like that's that's the way to the future we can't we can't just let nature do its thing nobody wants to see a horse starve to death over a rough winter um, and so um, selecting the best stallions to stay stallions um, taking the rest away, turning them into spectacular little geldings. Um, that's, that's what those organizations make possible, and it is so incredibly valuable. Um, and that's why I so wanted to come on this trip and um, have Midwestern University um, take care of some of the costs as well associated um, with my coming, with making sure the students had absolutely everything they needed to do these castrations in a um, in a gold standard kind of manner, um, sterile gloves, all the right medications, all the right follow-up, all the vaccines, that sort of thing. These guys all get an opportunity to geld 10 or 12 colts before they even get out of vet school. So we look for programs like this to, to help mentor um, veterinary students. And, and that's, that's what I like. I like, uh, I don't know whether you'd call it paying it forward or, or just, the joy of watching a naive vet student on the first day of the week, scared to death to do anything, to sitting back drinking coffee on the last day as they do what like you talk about. they've been them. doing it for yeah. years. Yeah. And not to mention the horses. We get horses in here that you literally can't handle. And then we castrate them so they can be good equine citizens and actually join the workforce and do their jobs and things like that. And so that's a huge sense of success as well. I think it's really important that this culture sees how a good castration can go. Um, there are a lot of lay people that do dan dentistries, lay people that do castrations, and a lot of horses don't survive that, um, that particular surgery, in quotes. So I think it's good for them to see how it can be and, and, and stimulate. Uh, uh, there's one uh, Native American uh, pre-vet student here that I think it gives her a, a, a unique opportunity to see how it could be as well. Well, today I actually did my first castration on a yearling stud, and then um, our Ganado, uh, yeah, our Ganado clinic, we did my first dental, and then yesterday I actually did my first hoof trim on a Shetland pony. Out here, the horses are inbreeding, cattle are breeding with other people's cattle. They don't know how to keep track of like which cow has been bred to which bull. And out here, the studs are just really overpopulating the herds and the horses, are no, there's no water, there's no vegetation, so there's nothing to eat, so they're just really starving. Hi, I'm Benji. I'm entering my fourth year at Midwestern University. I'm Hallie. I'm also entering my fourth year at Midwestern University. And I'm Cece. I'm also entering my fourth year at Midwestern University. Um, I was working with Dr. Mickey today doing intake, physical exams, vaccines and deworming on the horses that came in. And then in between that, I was also floating around, making sure every horse was getting everything that they needed to have done and helping out a bit over at castrations when things got quiet elsewhere. I thought everything went pretty well today. Um, everybody stayed under anesthesia pretty smoothly on my end. Um, we didn't have anyone standing up in the middle um, of it. So that was, that's a successful day at anesthesia for me um, is when they stay asleep for my surgeon to do her job. Yeah, and castrations went pretty well. Um, learning curve a little bit with all the wind and everything. But once I got comfortable, it was pretty straightforward. It's not a cowboy. We, we we're, we're not going to. These surgeons it out. made it look pretty easy, and um, we gilded everything from the easy ones: yearlings, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, which are classic. And it, you know, it it really is. Um, for me, I think it's it's good to show vet students that you can do this, and that that you're going to have to do this out in the in the in a rodeo arena somewhere. This is one of our externships. We take two week blocks for each rotation. And this is a rotation that we get to do where we're out here all week doing this. 
and the rest of the two week block we've spent with Dr. Fisher doing dentals back down in the valley near our university. I have loved this opportunity to come and do this. Um, I think everything's going really well. We're learning a lot of things. Um, it like kind of like with Cece going off of what she said, it is kind of a learning curve because at the school we have a surgery, like play, like a table and everything. Like we have board certified anesthesiologists and surgeons and here we are the anesthesiologists and we are the surgeons. So, um, but we're learning a lot and I can think I can speak for all of us. We are really enjoying this. Yeah. And not just what we're doing during the day, but every night we sit down to have rounds around our dinner and talk about what we learned for the day and what we saw and really get to share with each other so that whatever one of us learns, all of us get to learn from. So it's been really nice to be able to do that. It's also really helpful having a bunch of different doctors with us so that they can kind of share our, their thoughts mm -hmm. with us and we can get a lot of different perspectives as well. For example, we have two different dentists that are working and a third who's also subbing in. So we get to see the differences in how they conduct their procedures. And every vet has different approaches to problems that we get to take with us into our future practices. Yeah. These people have so much love for their horses and they care for them so much. And there's only so much opportunity that they get to provide services for their horses that they need. And so getting to come out here and serve communities that don't have these services all the time is really valuable to get to provide this level of care for horses that are so loved and deserve it so much. Agreed. If we didn't have that type of support, either the vets, the other vets, or Glenda, or other people that can ill afford making contributions like this would shell it out of their pockets. I know Dr. Anderson and I last year spent about three or four thousand dollars each to make it happen and Glenda donates her whole energy and time to this and her devoted assistants who are equally dedicated this grant will make that a much easier path for them. And it will also, I hope, tie in with engaging the two fairly new universities in Arizona to regard this as a public service for both the Navajo Nation and Hopi Nation and Apache Nation and their students. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for these students. They'll, they'll get something here that they'll never, ever get again. My name is LaVon Hunt. I brought in a stud colt today to get castrated. Um, just first stud colt I ever had, so I didn't want to deal with the stud, so I prefer gilding. And majority of the horses I have are um, mares, so I didn't want him to be jumping on the mare, so that's why I needed him to get castrated today. It helps out, especially with the low cost and without us having to travel so far. I mean, the nearest vet we have, veterinarian we have, is probably about two hours away, whether we go to uh, any direction we go. I mean, in it, these guys coming around on Navajo Nation really helps out, and I don't have to take time off work, and especially with, the, with all the different kinds of horses and animals everybody has on the reservation it, it it helps us out i mean it really especially with me with the cattle and sheep and horses when these vets come around it's i don't really have to go far to get things done for my animals things like this is very helpful to me i mean we got glenda bringing this around i mean she's it, it means a lot yeah it's very very hard to get a hold of a veterinarian in this area we have uh, a 78 year old veterinarian out of Delcon. She covers Tuba City, Pinion, and out in Delcon area in between the drive. And sometimes we, you can make a trip out to Tuba City, which is like five hours away, or Pinion. So for any veterinarian service to come out in your area, that, that is really a plus. I, I, I wish more people would come out in this area uh, for the, to serve our animal, and and I'm I'm very grateful uh, that, that today that this clinic came out. It's it's just nice the different things they bring around. I mean the dentistry, the hoof trimming, and the castration, and 
it's, it's, it's nice to have them come around here. My name is Jack. I'm out here with uh, a professional team of veterinarians and farriers trying to help uh, horses and people in the res on the reservation here in uh, Navajo land. It's been a great experience. I've met a lot of great people, a lot of good professionals. I've had the real pleasure of working with Pernell Charlie here, who's a horseshoer in the area and has been here for a quarter of a century shoeing horses. So he is quite the horseman. I've learned quite a bit. I get to see a different style of horse, the horse that's on the reservation. And it's been really a pleasure because I can work with a farrier that knows how to do these horses. And I've learned a lot since I've been here. And it's been a, a real good experience for me. Born and raised here, I can't tell you how long ago, but I guess uh, born and raised around horses and then I got an interest in uh, taking care of my own hooves because, oh gosh, uh, back in the day when I was in college, uh, it would cost $50 to shoot. So back then, you know, that even, even, even that 50 was a lot of money. So I got smart and I thought I could learn to do my own horses and go to shoeing school and start that. And uh, it feels good to make an effort like this particular hoof today. So this is off a pony and it was about that long. It is leaning to the side. So we got to um, help a, a young uh, horse, a young equine, to, to uh, feel better with their hooves. Uh, I, I guess uh, that made me feel good um, uh, that I could be helpful to this animal. Things that are happening in the business of horseshoeing and farriery, those kind of things, we can get out here, we're all volunteers. So anybody looking at this, we want you to know that we're volunteers, we're out here helping horses, we're helping people. These people need the help, the horses need the help. So anybody that is feeling good enough to contribute and help us help these things, it's a beautiful thing. Charlie's been out here his whole life, I haven't. But I've learned so much in the last five days. We've been to five or six different spots so we've got one more to go to. And everything that I've been involved in lately in my week here with the Navajo people and the Navajo Nation, has been one of the most rewarding experiences I've had in my life. So if you understand how good it is to be a volunteer, you know what I'm talking about, and we look forward to any help that we can get. And I, like I said, if you come out here and volunteer, you'll leave away with something good in your heart and in your mind because you've done something good for good people. Hi, my name is Vanessa Burnside, and I brought my five horses here today to get their hooves trimmed and one castrated. A lot of the vets that we do have are hundreds of miles away from where we do live. Um, our main vet, the Navajo Nation vet, is usually closed um, or booked for a couple of months. Uh, we drove two hours to get here, so it was a really nice drive and it's been great. Every individual are kind of a little bit different from one another. It was how we were taught, I guess, how we were brought up to have horses, cows, and sheep. And there's a little difference, but it all, they're probably all the same though. It's very appreciative that what they're, what they're doing to help us people that have horses, you know, because this is a, a lot cheaper than going straight directly to a veterinarian. It's a little higher, but this way it's a little cheaper for us and it's really nice that they're doing that and I appreciate that and thank each one of them that put this up. Well, thank you. Glenda Davis, who um, is is the, the head woman who kind of put this whole thing together, was literally in tears thanking us the first night before we started. It was so touching. Um, and so um, they so needed this. And um, I can't tell you how valuable it was for the students. So, so not only is it an absolutely essential thing for the, for the tribes and the nations, but our students got to learn in such a wonderful environment surrounded by incredibly grateful uh, people. The cool stuff for me is, um, is learning a different culture, climbing into uh, a different culture and sort of learning it from the, from the backside. I think especially with the Navajo Nation, um, you can drive through this place on I-40 
and never really see the, the nation itself. And uh, they have a lot of good things. They have a strong, strong family value, and they have a really spiritual way of looking at, at life that a lot of us could probably emulate. It was an honor to be invited. Um, and I am so grateful to be invited and what a wonderful thing to take part of. Like, you know, after a week of work, you go home and you're like, I did some okay stuff this week. You know, some things are better, um, some things are treated. But after this week, like, there's an immense amount of satisfaction. I would like to say everybody here that has volunteered and provided their time and, their, and they've contributed, getting away from what they were normally doing as something super special. Glenda has been quite the hostess. She's done everything that we have could even imagine. She set all this up and it's something that I am really grateful for. Also for these veterinarians that are here and the veterinarian students. And I'm even very, 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 very grateful for working with Charlie here. Pernair Charlie is a top shoer out here. He does good work. And everybody that's been out here, it's been a pleasure. And everyone has done everything that they could to make a positive contribution to make this whole effort work. And we are so appreciative that Glenda has invited us here to do so. A lot of our Mustangs are being rounded up and being sent to slaughterhouses or in different areas and it's causing imbalance and disharmony in our part of the region here. And that's one of the reasons why the elders believe that there is a drought happening. So for that reason, I believe that telling the creation story and, and, and allowing people to feel the spiritual part of that horse, they will see the horse more sacred and more special. I'm a young, 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 I'm a